The line I'm about to show you is gonna win you a lot of quick games and you're gonna have fun doing it because you get to sacrifice pieces and attack your opponent's king. So this is the most common position that you will face after white plays the move e4. This is called the Italian game. I recommend you play the two knights defense, which is one of the more aggressive approaches from black. Knight to g5, we covered in a previous video, so you're prepared, but the other move that people will play is d3, just defending their pawn. They say, no, I don't wanna go into a fried liver attack. I just want a nice, calm, normal, normal game. So what we are going to do is not give them a normal game. They want us to probably play bishop c5 or some move like that. We're gonna immediately strike with d5, okay? And when you do this, you're kind of limiting your opponent's options. Like they don't have a lot of options. You're attacking their bishop. They don't want to just go back and let you start taking stuff and opening things up. So they're going to take you. It's kind of the only move that your opponent will play. We're going to recapture with the knight. And at this point, most of your opponents are going to be like, okay, uh, well, I'm going to castle because this is what they normally do anyway. And they notice that our king is in the center and they want to play rookie one and attack us. So we're going to fix that problem right away. And we're going to play the move bishop to c5. Now this move, looks like a normal developing move, but actually we are getting ready to set a very clever trap, okay? So bishop to c5, and most people are gonna play rook to e1, lining up on your pawn. They have two attackers now, and we only have one defender. But you know what we're gonna do? We're going to ignore it. So this is a gambit. We're gambiting the pawn by simply castling. We get our king to safety. We don't have to worry about any shenanigans with the rook, and we let him take the pawn. Now, most people are gonna take the pawn. This is by far the most common move. If they don't, we'll come back and talk about what you can do there, but most people are gonna take it. This is what we want, and now you get to play a move which has a 71% win rate as black. Guys, that is insane. Winning that much with black is insane. 71%, are you ready for this? Queen to h4. Now, let's talk about this move for a second. First of all, our knight is now undefended. We are literally just abandoning the knight on d5 because we are creating our own more powerful threat on f2 with the queen and the bishop okay so first things first let's just talk about what happens if they do take you because a couple people will do this especially at the lower levels they're going to see a free knight and they're going to just take it okay if they do that we are very happy because now our bishop gets to jump in on f2 with a fork they're going to move their king try to get away and hide over here now you're totally winning in this position but you need to understand why and you need to make sure you don't fall for a little pitfall, okay? So pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you. It looks like we could just take the rook, and that's not a terrible move, but I do not recommend you take the rook. Here's why. They're going to fork you with f3, with knight f3, and now it gets very tricky. There's lots of things you have to remember. You have to play the exact moves, otherwise you're just gonna get into a bad position, and I don't want you to have to worry about that, okay? So the better way to do it is to actually just take their knight with your knight. And one of the main reasons we're doing this Listen carefully, guys, is because we want to put our bishop on g4 and attack this queen. And we can't do that if their knight is there. Because if we go there now, they just take us with their knight, right? So we take the knight first, getting ready to go to g4. Now, you say, but Nelson, then they're going to take us and they saved their rook. That's true. They've temporarily saved their rook, but we're still going to get that rook, and I'll show you how. Here's what you have to remember. Well, let me tell you this first. There's this move, bishop g3, which looks really, really good. Because we're threatening checkmate, we're attacking the rook. Did you see the eval bar? The eval bar jumped in white's favor when I played this. Why? Because of this amazing move, rook to h5. They attack our queen, it's defended by their queen, and at the same time, they defend against the checkmate because now they just take our queen. The rook defends, right? So this is an amazing move. This is what you have to stop. This is why we want to play bishop g4 because now that we control this diagonal with our bishop, Rook h5 is never an option for white anymore. Do you guys see how that works? So after they deal with the queen, they can either move their queen or they can just block. Now we go bishop g3, threatening checkmate. They no longer can go rook h5. We just take it, right? And after they deal with the checkmate, they have to go like h3. Now we can start thinking about taking the rook. Now, before we do it, we're going to make a trade. Then we're going to take it. And when the dust settles, let's look at what's happened. Queen for queen, bishop for bishop, rook for rook. So we have an extra rook against their knight, which is good. It means we're up material. And on top of that, white's king is very weak. Their pieces are badly placed. It's a very, very great position for black, okay? So let me summarize that because this is really, really important that you don't forget this, okay? Because I guarantee you this is gonna happen in your games and you need to make sure you understand what's going on. So let's go all the way back just to recap. So we castle, give them the pawn for free. 
We bring out the queen. Remember, 71% win rate after this move attacking on F2. If they take the bait and take the knight, we jump in with the bishop. When they hide in the corner, get rid of the knight. Remember the reason why, because if you remember the reason why, you're always going to remember the right moves. We want to play bishop g4 to attack the queen, but also to control this h5 square. So we take it. They take back. Then we go there with the attack on the queen. Now that we've controlled h5, it's safe for us to go bishop g3, threatening checkmate. Of course, they can't take us because it's pinned. We're attacking the rook as well. And after they stop the checkmate, now we go ahead and trade and we go into this winning end game where we're just up material and have a great position. Okay, so I mean, I'm going to put these lines in the description so you can copy paste them into chess.com or leech chess if you forget. All right, so let's go back. So what we just talked about was after we go queen h4, if they take our knight, okay, if they take our knight. Now, that's not what most people do. Most people will play the move g3. It's a losing move, okay? It's move nine. They're already in a losing position, even though it looks like a logical move. They want to attack your queen with tempo and stop your threat, right? Makes sense, right? Here's why it doesn't work. Bishop takes f2, an amazing sacrifice, and we are luring their king out so that our queen can jump in and attack them. Now, quickly, if they don't take your bishop and they go king h1, which is actually the best move, we just take here. Again, we're threatening the checkmate. They can't take us because the king, and we're threatening the knight, we're threatening the rook, it's an awful position for white, okay? So if you get this position, just, just play chess, you're gonna probably take this, maybe your bishop comes in afterwards and threatens some more stuff, maybe they let you checkmate them, some people will do that, you know, it's a great position. So most people are gonna take you. Now we jump in with the queen. Now the king has two options, one and two. One of those moves is really, really bad. Can you guys figure out which one it is? Well, it's kind of a trick question. They're both bad, but this one is worse because now the king is totally trapped and we simply go bishop h3 checkmate. Game is over. This is move 11 and you just won with a cool checkmate, all right? So they're not going to go there. They're probably going to go up. And now you have a lot of ways to win. The most powerful is actually just simply retreating your knight. Why? Well, for one, we saved our knight. It was about to get captured. But more importantly, we want to bring our bishop to g4 and we want to check, uh, skewer the king and queen. Put the king in check, take the queen. You say, Nelson, there's a knight there defending. That's okay, because next move, we're going to take the knight with check, and then after the recapture, we're going to go there. So if white plays a random move, no problem. You can just take it and then get the queen. Also, in a lot of cases, you can play knight d4, and that just leads to a checkmate. Like in this example, king e3. Uh, let's see what it is, knight f5. And you'll have to kind of find some of these lines in your games, but it's, it's so much fun to play. It's good practice for your tactics and you can pretty much play whatever you want you're going to win there's the checkmate okay so you you have options okay you can take it and get the queen you can also look for checkmates with knight to d4 um if they attack your queen same thing take it with check you're going to either win the queen or maybe go for a checkmate depending on where the king moves like if it comes up there's actually a forced checkmate you go queen f2 uh what's the move if they take rookie eight check and then this is checkmate there's all kinds of checkmates so i'm not going to show you all of them Feel free to play around with, your, with yourself, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's recap. We sacrifice the pawn, they take it. We bring out our queen, threatening here. We already talked about if they take our knight, and if they go g3, which looks logical, this is the most common move you will face, we sacrifice our bishop to lure the king out, we take with the queen, and then we just bring our knight back. And now you have all sorts of crazy threats, the knight, the bishop, and checkmating the king. It's a lot of fun. You're going to win a ton of games. I, I've played this opening a lot. It's it's just, yeah, it's just great. Now, we need to talk about some things here that uh, you might face, okay? What if your opponent plays a better move? What if they play the move queen f3? This is the best move in the position. And some people are either very good, they're very prepared, or they might get lucky and stumble upon this move. And I want you to be prepared. So if they play queen f3, it's a very good move because they stop your threat, they defend it, and they also are kind of attacking at the same time with the queen, okay? So what we're gonna do here is move this knight away from danger and at the same time threaten a fork. Okay, you wanna go to c2, we wanna fork these rooks. Okay, nice looking move. Some of you might notice, however, that there's one, two, three pieces attacking on f7. What happens if they take us? Well, let's talk about it. If they take with the bishop, not a big deal. We just slide our king over. We now have a pin. They've put themselves into a pin. If they move the bishop, we take the queen. And our king is actually pretty safe in the corner. 
Okay, so nothing to worry about. We still have the threat there. We're threatening here. We have the pin. We still have the threat here they have to watch out for. No problem. If they take with the knight, this is a little bit more dangerous for us because now they have a discovered check coming. They can move this knight somewhere with a check. We don't want to allow that because we would have a problem. There's too many pieces attacking our king. But luckily for us, we have a simple solution. Queen takes F2 check. What are we doing? We're forcing a queen trade, okay? Because if they try to avoid it, we just now get checkmate. So they have to take us. And then we take, and then we get the fork on C2, okay? And this knight cannot move, it's pinned. So we're not worried about it moving somewhere and causing us problems because it's pinned. And when we get the opportunity, let's say knight C3, we're gonna take this rook because this is the rook that's active, that's threatening us, okay? Even though we could take the one in the corner, that one's not doing so much. And if you do that, you might get into more trouble, okay? Because this rook is very active. So just take this rook. And then when they take back, we are gonna go ahead and sack our rook now for this, these two pieces. And when the dust settles, we have an equal end game, maybe slightly better for black because this pawn is an isolated weak pawn. So we can easily attack that. Bishop f5, rook d8, maybe rook e8 check. Maybe our knight jumps in somewhere. It's, it's, it's fine, okay? And remember, this is if they played the best move, right? So I just wanted to show you, you have some options here, okay? So let's go back and recap. Against queen f3, defending, you bring your knight over, attacking here, getting the fork. If they take with the bishop, move your king, not a problem. If they take with the knight, just remember to force the queen trade so you don't get into trouble, and then you take it into the end game where you're fine. And there's one more thing that they could do, knight a3, where they just try to defend you. And there's a really nice move here that we have knight to d4, again attacking the queen and again threatening this fork. And there's some really tricky lines here, but I just wanna show you one. If they go queen to d1 to defend, there's an amazing move here. And remember, lines are in the description, so you don't need to memorize all this right now. Just kind of try to understand. B5, what in the world? What are we doing with B5? Well, two things. Number one, if they take with the knight, we've lured this knight away from the defense, and now you can see we can hop in and get a fork. Okay, so that's one thing. If they take with the bishop, we have lured the bishop away from our king, which is good. We can now trade our knight for that bishop, which is good. And in doing so, we've removed the knight from this square, which means our bishop is unleashed and we jump in with the bishop and now we're just winning again. Okay, pretty, pretty clever move if you think about it. Now, I don't think you're gonna face this too often because most people aren't gonna play queen f3 and knight a3 and queen d1. Uh, those are like hard moves to find, I think, but if they do, you'll be prepared, okay? So let's just recap everything that we just talked about because I know it was a lot, but this is important. So. Against the Italian game, we play the two knights defense. If they avoid the fried liver and play d3, we strike with d5. We recapture. When they castle, we bring out our bishop to c5. Remember, we're setting up future tactics with that bishop sacrifice. That's how you can remember that move. Then we castle. Remember, we don't care about this pawn. It's a gambit. We want them to take it, and most people will. Queen to h4. 71% win rate move, threatening F2. We don't care if they take it. We already talked about how we jump in with the bishop and we're going to win. So if they play G3, we sack the bishop. Those are the lines where a lot of times you get a quick checkmate. And then we just looked at queen F3 where they defend, but we play knight here, threatening the fork. And we talked about those. Okay, now one more thing. Going back here, when we offer the pawn, some people don't like free pawns. They just don't like it. They're afraid that you've prepared something, which you have, but you know they're like, I don't want pawns. And they might play c3. This is another move that you might see from time to time. Uh, unfortunately, we can't play queen h4, obviously, because the knight is just will take us. So we have to have a different plan. And what I recommend you do is just play bishop g4, pin the knight. A lot of people are gonna try to chase you away. Don't worry about it. Just go back, keep the pin there. And remember this, they don't really ever wanna play g4 because if they do, they have now totally weakened their king side and we're happy to see this because long-term as the game goes on, their king's gonna have problems, okay? So most people here will play something like knight d2 and then I recommend just bring your knight back, attack the bishop, and if they try to save their bishop, your queen can jump in on d3 and black has a pretty nice, it's pretty equal, but there's nothing wrong with this position for black, okay? So if they don't take your pawn, no problem, that's what you can do. Now, the most important thing about this whole video, okay? When we play the two knights defense, if they play knight g5, trying to go into a fried liver, you need to know what to do. You need to know what to do, which is why you should watch this video because I just covered it, 
a great attacking system, you need to make sure you understand that because you have to be prepared. So I'll see you over there in that video right now. See you there.